This is Doug Beerton, as many of you know, of classic football shirts. Hello. And Rude, do you have a microphone, Rude? Ah, there you go. Oh, oh. hello, everyone. All right, boss. Am I starting? I don't mind. We've got, we've got Rude Hullet, and we've got some... I'm not sure if these are in chronological order, the, are the, they? They roughly are let, in chronological order. Should we start order. with... No, no, let's no, not let's, start with, let's start start with that one. You, you so, take it away. So, Rude, uh, this shirt is your debut. 1981. Against the Switzerland? That's great. I, you know, the funny thing was, is that um, it was my debut. Um, we were um, asked to come to um, the airport, um, Frank Reichardt and myself, and uh, they would give us all kinds of stuff uh, to wear during the, the, the journey, but I forgot to tell us that we also had to bring some decent shoes. So the first picture of Reichardt and me was when we had a suit and trainers underneath. So we were already trendy in those days. <laughs> but and, and uh, what, is, what was also happening was, um, in those days, you didn't have your name on your shirt. So, uh, first half, and the, the game was almost suspended because it was a lot of rain. Uh, fire uh, men were trying to get all the, all the water off the pitch. And uh, we played, I, I was on the bench, Rijkaard was playing the first half, and I was playing second half. And nobody noticed that I came in. They are still thought it was Rijkaard <laughs> playing. So that was my debut. You, you two, had, I mean, you knew each other super well. You grew up together, no? We grew up together in the same neighborhood. Uh -huh. So it was nice that we also yeah, had how, that same Yeah, how, how weird same was time. that to be basically out there it on the field? It is weird. It is weird because we played uh, football on the street uh, all the time together with a lot of other players. And you think, so why did I make it and why not the others? So it's, that's difficult, and sometimes you don't know the answer. Really? That. There were people there who were as good yeah, as you? They were, yeah, they were as good as us, yes. Wow. But, you know, making choices, going out, chasing women. <laughs> <laughs> but what about all the other going guys, wrong. Rude? What did they do? <laughs> let's, um, let, let's move swiftly on from that point and, and look at the next shirt here, Doug. So, what have we got yeah, here? I'm sorry, I haven't got a Harlem shirt for you. But no. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, I'm oh, I apologize that, for that. That, that is terrible. We're jump, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, my... That my debut as a football player is not here. Harlem. We've got a lot of shirts, but unfortunately not Harlem. Okay. So we're jumping up to Feyenoord. Feyenoord, um, yes. And this... you, sh you played alongside Johan Cruyff. Yeah, this was the year that uh, Johan Cruyff joined us. Uh, Gauwe Gids. It's a golden, how do you say that? Uh, it's like, like the yellow pages. Yeah, like a yellow pages, but then gold. But yeah, Same thing. Um, this was the, sh the first time uh, for me to win the championship in Holland with Johan Cruyff. We won the double, so also the cup, and it was for me, uh, you know, like having, you know, the best teacher you could ever imagine, and the best coach you could ever imagine on the pitch. So I learned a lot from Johan uh, during that season, and he was, I think, 36 or 38, something like that, and he was still, and I, on training, if you have somebody who is a legend like him and you own training, I try really hard to nick balls of him and I couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't do it, he was so quick. So for me, he was the best you know, teacher I could ever imagine. Do you remember the first time that you met him? Oh, I met him already before that, but uh, I played against him uh, when, he, uh, I, when I played in Harlem. He came back from, uh, from abroad, first time played for Ajax, and I was playing in that debut where he scored that unbelievable goal the first time he came back to, to Holland. So I, I met him already a couple of times. Oh, magnificent. Next up, we've got your... Uh, well, well, this is actually yes. a shirt worn by yourself. Uh, oh, for, is this the actual shirt? This is, yeah, this for, is the actual for, for PSV, number 10. It, <laughs> smells, it smells beautiful, obviously. Uh, <laughs> number 10, is that, is that the number, number that you yeah. wanted to play in? You know, it, it was uh, first year. Um, Johan Cruyff was the coach of Ajax for the first time. And everybody was very, very enthusiastic in uh, Ajax that they could, could not uh, miss the championship. It was for me the first time that I went to a club uh, that I had to actually win. I was uh, talent off and I had to show everybody that I was capable of, of winning also. So, uh, and we won. Dutch football of the year. And we the won the time. title, and I remember the first game we played against Ajax away, and everybody thought that we were going to get hammered there. And we won 4-2, uh, 
away. So that was the first knock already on the door saying that we have a possibility with this team to win it. And we won it uh, two of twice in a year. Yes. Of twice uh, in a row, sorry. Double, double. Yeah, <laughs> so therefore that was, and I say also there was a nice time also, peace behind Hover. Good environment to develop yourself as a mm -hmm. player. Uh, of course, that was my best learning school with, uh, with Johan. But then for a player to, to develop it yourself more and, and the environment, PSV Eindhoven is fantastic. How, how were the fans, how were the PSV fans about leaving uh, the fact that you had a pass? Oh, they didn't like it. They didn't like no, it? No, no, no. In those days, you could express yourself. And uh, so when I played at the uh, final stage, they throwed bananas. I don't know why, but <laughs> bananas at me. And I was, uh, I was only uh, uh, interested in money. But the thing is, I just wanted to chase uh, trophies. And I proved that because we won twice in a row. We won. Uh, but the thing is, that it was the, the best learning school was here with Johan because Johan Cruyff had done that already before. And he warned me already. He said to me, Ruth, if you're going to change the team, the fans will be really, really upset with you. If you are a player that is average, nobody cares if you go. But if you are very good, then people were very upset. And he told me about when he left Ajax to go to Barcelona, he got, uh, you know, uh, 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 messages, bad messages, bad letters for, uh, of people. But he got also a, b a box with a tarantula in it. Yeah. A live tarantula. So, yes. <laughs> Just, you know, so you can imagine people are, you know, are strange when it comes to their club. And you think to yourself, yeah, so people get crazy. So therefore, be prepared for the fact that if you do, that people will get upset. So I got only bananas, right? Without the spider. But you, wow. you must have made everyone in Holland happy in this shirt. Yes. Obviously, this the ultimate Euro '88. This was uh, the shirt that we won uh, the European Championship. We are particularly proud of it. It's funny because the the, the the designer is also here, and I heard her talking there back there, and. For me, it was the ugliest shirt I've ever played in. <laughs> but we won with it. We really won. And it looks like, how you say that for the, the skin of a fish? How you call that? Yeah, scales. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that. And I, it's, <laughs> it's so funny you say that, because I remember it's, the time it's, watching it's, it. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's nostalgic. It mm -hmm. means a lot to me. But it was not the prettiest. Um, but it, it, it helped us winning the, the championship. So. It, it is important for me. It's important. But, right. you know, winning in Germany against Germany is of always love. <laughs> Sorry. It was... Uh, and the funny thing is, we... Um, for, us, the, for us, the tournament was finished already. It was the semi-final. And um, in those days, things were totally different. Um, I asked the coach if he could organize a party after that. You can even imagine that if you organize a party now, how the newspapers will, uh, will go about it. But we could. We invited also all the journalists also, all the wives and everything. It was a fantastic party. And then we, then we uh, flew from Hamburg all the way to Munich in the south, from the north all the way to the south. And the day before, we went to a concert of Whitney Houston. Can you imagine? <laughs> you cannot even imagine that you could do that now. You know, and so, and before the game, uh, our coach said, look, I needed to get you a little bit with your mind to something else for the simple reason that we are in the final. So, guys, now that we are here, please win, uh, win, this, win this game. Be focused on it. And all of a sudden, we switched off. And what is also extraordinary in football, the best game we played was the first game. We lost, and the worst game we played, we won and was in the final against Russia because we took all the chances, and they played a little bit better than us, but we won the tournament. So it was almost like destiny that we had to win it, and it was for the first trophy that Holland ever won in a major tournament. So we are particularly proud of that. Yeah. Do you like the jersey now, Ruud? Look, I still, you know, look at it, but, you know... <laughs> And I still think it's an ugly shirt. All right. But it, it, is, it has value for us. Look, 
if you would win in that shirt, look, can you bring that puppet, please? Can you bring that? Look, I want your ordeal about this shirt because I think, can you, can you take it, please, please? It's the David And don't Seaman laugh, 96. okay, don't laugh, don't laugh. Come on, bring it. Just pick it up. Yes, pick it up by his balls. Pick it up by his balls. Who designed this? You know, has to get fired. Come on. You can't design this. Come on. This is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, have a look around, Rue, because there's some yeah, more. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> it, uh... All Come right. On. A classic strip. You make your move to, to Italy and Milan, yeah. where the tracksuits are better, the jerseys are better. Classic look, Rossonero. Yes, this is super. I like uh, the one, Robbie de Capa. Mm. I think it's, uh, there's nothing on it. You know, there's no fussy things, you know. Just plain uh, how a shirt should be. I think it's, it, it has something nostalgic. And it was simple. The only thing is this had a little bit more because, you know, the, you know, Robbie de Kappa wants also to be recognized. So I think that made this work. But the shirt was fantastic. It was the first year I came uh, to Milan and we had to wear these shirts. It was a little bit synthetic. So not to uh, get irritated nipples, you had to wear a tank shirt, tank top, in order to get, you know, to wear the shirt. But it was a nice shirt. How, how many jerseys did give you irritated nipples? How, how often did you get irritated oh, nipples? You know, if you, some shirts, you know, you feel it, it's synthetic, and then yeah. it hurts. Yeah. It's not nice. Rude, when you signed, am I right in taking Am I right in thinking that, that Silvio Berlusconi came personally to, to woo you to, for Milan? That, I, if I'm not mistaken, did he sit down at a piano and play you La Vie en Rose? No, 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 no. Is that no, not no, true? No. no, no, no. The thing is, the first time uh, Milan came to me, we played uh, a tournament with PSV Eindhoven in Barcelona. Uh, and I think they still do it, the Kamper tournament that was always in the beginning of the year. And Tottenham was there. Barcelona, Milan, and myself. And I played really, really well. I must say, I played well in that tournament. And uh, when I was in the hotel room, somebody knocked on the door, and it was um, Mr. Breida, and I think uh, Galliani come in my room. But you must understand, uh, I Italians don't speak English. So the only thing they had to say to me was, uh, uh, you, you, Jokare, yeah. Milan. <laughs> and I said, uh, okay, <laughs> why not? And I thought that that was in the beginning of the season and I thought uh, I was playing well. There was a whole lot of rumors then. And um, after a while, I thought to myself, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen anything. And then all one day uh, I get a, a, a uh, in the locker room after training, somebody came to me, you have to go to the office of the Philips, you know, Philips was the biggest sponsor of, uh, uh, of Peace Vanta, had to go to the office, and Berlusconi was sitting there, and he paid the enormous amount of 70 million guilders, that's uh, around now mm, 6 million pounds or something. I was the most expensive player in the world in those days. So, I had to live with up, up with that, with the fact that I was the most expensive player. Did you like that? I didn't care so much. I didn't. It was not a pressure or something. But can you imagine six million pounds? Most expensive player. <laughs> and, and this was a club that had, amongst other things, your, your Netherlands teammates, Marco van Basten and Frank yeah, Rijkaard. Van Basten came later. So, for that reason, it was a beautiful shirt. And we won a lot of things with this, by the way. Yeah, you certainly did. All right, now, uh, Doug, what's yeah, this? On to the 1990 World Cup and... You know. Yeah, 1990, that was not a success for Holland. Because when we won this, the players that normally always, you know, worked hard, they thought in 1990 that they were the stars. And that broke a little bit, you know, the... The, the, you know, the chemistry in that team. Um, so it was very difficult for us. Funny thing was that um, uh, the third match against Ireland, we drew, 
uh, we always have good uh, good relationship with the Irish and the best game we played was against the Germans till that accident with Frank Reichardt and Filler and then all of a sudden they turned it upside down but we were really really playing well against the Germans so I don't know what ha could have happened if that didn't ha didn't happen but so I don't look at this shirt so much if oh, you don't right. mind let's move on <laughs> but it's a better looking shirt than that one <laughs> but it's okay what about this what about this Milan though away an away shirt you yeah know, which one out of these two I, would you say? I love the shirt uh, what I liked also about Milan was that uh, we always played with white socks, white shorts, and normally with this. But when we played the, Euro uh, the European Championship final, Milan always played in all white. Always. Don't know how they did it, but we always played in, uh, in this shirt. And uh, as you can see, this is the year that we won the Champions League. And I think that Milan was the first one who had that thing on him. Nobody had it. I think that Berlusconi put it on it. Yeah, we were allowed to put it on, and therefore that shirt was, again, value to sell, and all this kind of thing. And I think that that was the, f maybe, I don't know if you had, because I think, this is the, the, when was the first time the you first had your name that. on the, on the, on oh, the that, back? That, that's here, here. Euro 92. So in those days, you didn't even have your name on, your, uh, on the back. So here you go. There you go. It was the first Euro one. Euro '92 was the yes. first. Um... Yeah. So this was, this was Lotto. Yeah. It, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Look, I just like plain shirts. I don't like all that fuzzy things on it. I don't. It. Maybe it's me, but I like. I like that. It has something original. I think they designed it for that purpose also. And of course, nowadays with all these sponsors, you know, they, I can understand that you do it with the away kit. Mm. I understand that. But leave the original as it is. I think that is, for me, the purest of the purest. Well, after your playing career, as a manager, did you ever have any input in shirt design and no, what, no, what no, the team was going to nah, turn out? Sometimes in? you had, yes, yeah, sometimes. Mm. Look, if you, if you feel good in a shirt, if you have a beautiful shirt, you feel better. Everybody has that. If you have a nice suit, if you have nice, uh, nice shoes or whatever, you feel better. So if you have a, but not you so won. much. But you won in that one. That one, route. yeah. <laughs> if you go in that one. <laughs> okay, not that one. You cannot save one shot in that one. All right. Well, this behind Doug here, we have. <laughs> and it happened also. Huh? That's, uh, okay. Is this one yes. plain enough for you, the Sam Doria shirt? I think, uh, for my taste, I think that this is the most beautiful shirt. Ever. Yeah. I think there's an English team also asked Sampdoria if they could wear it. Yeah, there's an English team that asked, who was it? Here you go. <laughs> it has uh, white shorts and white socks as well. They came specially to Sampdoria to ask for it. I think that this is a fantastic shirt. It's still the same. No fiddling on it. No nothing on it. Mm. And I, I, you know, I, I, I really think it's one of the most beautiful shirts. I completely agree with you. And I remember watching you in a famous game for Sam Doria Marassi, scoring the winner against Milan. Oh, yeah, they yeah, didn't like that very much. <laughs> in this jersey. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, Roberto Mancini, okay, so this is a shirt that one English club wanted to use. I remember Roberto Mancini, a couple of years after that, was so in love with the Blackburn shirt, you know, the classic Colin Henry yeah, Blackburn yeah, yeah, shirt, yeah, yeah. that he turned Sampdoria's away kit into that same oh, half and half It can be, thing. yeah. But yeah. It, 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 you know, sometimes you have a shirt that has something special. Yeah. And I think this, this, this has it. This is particular. This is only to do with them. Okay. And I, I, I like it. I All think right. it's something to do with the colors also previous, you know. Yeah. When you talk about special shirts, Rude, no, How about not this that bad one. boy? Up no, here? not that one. <laughs> Did this, this, this is also part of one of the ugliest shirts I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and lucky it's an away shirt. You know, the Chelsea shirt itself is a great shirt. It's great blue, you know, and you have the white socks with blue. It's fantastic. But this is exactly when these brands have a possibility to, you know, to go, let their, you know, fantasy go, go loose. <laughs> 
on a shirt like this. This is ugly. And I tell you, um, I don't think you can win in grey. Grey makes you dull. Well, I think that Man United proved that also. Man grey, United, they don't yeah. Wanna, they don't want to play it anymore. I think also England lose, lost against the Germans also in grey. Yeah. So grey is not a colour to play in. Really? Makes you dull. Was the orange, was that a homage to your presence? No, 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 I don't no. think so, no. Okay. I had a great time at Chelsea. I really enjoyed it. It was my last club. I loved it there. Um, we had some good battles also with uh, May United. Um, and I think that uh, the rest is history. But, you know, Chelsea in those days were at the beginning of something totally new. And it was, for me, it was fantastic. Uh, I, that's why I love to play in England. So when you're in the dressing room and... The, the kit man comes in and he hands out these shirts for the first time. What do the players say? You know, I, I don't think you think so much about it because you are so focused on the game. Uh -huh. And that you, but then later after the game and you look at it and you think, yeah, that's ugly. <laughs> that is a bad design. I don't know what he was thinking, but I don't, I don't, I don't like it. But like, like I said, they go crazy on these away shirts. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, they just, just try to make a statement. And uh, I think, for instance, maybe many people remember, I think a couple of years ago, it was okay. I think that Real Madrid played in pink, I think. Pink or something like that. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. So it was a, yeah. When you were playing, so you're wearing a shirt you don't like, do you try and swap with the other player, you know, you go after the game? Yeah, you know, you it's, know. It's, it's, a, it's a decision made by the club and by the board, and, you know, you can't do nothing about it. You have to do it, uh, but you're not happy with it. And sometimes you think, what, do you, what is your thinking about it? It's the same as Liverpool came with white, uh, what is it, suits, to the FA Cup final. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? And then, you know, you lose it because of that. Some players used to turn up for Holland with suits and trainers as well. It's crazy that what people do sometimes. That's the but, mistake. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was already ahead of, of the fashion of today. Because now sneakers everywhere. Did you, did you used to swap shirts at the end of games? Yes, I did. I did swap shirts. I still have some shirts. Not a lot. What was the best one you got? What was the best one you got? I still have a, an old Napoli shirt. Maradona? Uh, no, not Maradona. Um, and it was NNR. NNR. That is the NNR also. Same. And they were made of wool almost. So if it was raining, the, the shirt was coming to here, I think. <laughs> but it is something, it was, yeah, it's an old shirt. But I don't have so much. I don't have so much anymore. But. Uh, some of the old shirts, you know, sometimes you look at it, it's somewhere in the back, and I don't know, you know, I don't look at it so much anymore. So, Root, from all of the shirts here, if you had to pick a favorite, which one, you know, is it? Look, I have, to, it, yeah, it, I have to pick the ugly shirt. See, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, you're wanting it, and, yeah, it, it, it meant, for us, the first trophy that we ever won with, uh, with the national team, and of course, as a player, it's fantastic when you play for your club, that's all individual, but this is what you do for your country, they can't, and there's nothing better than to win for your country. So therefore, uh, yeah, this I will pick this, one. yeah, I will okay. pick this. Well, we pick the same one, well, I'm yeah? happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You're all welcome. Right. Rude Hunter, everybody.